Ballyclare District Historical Memorial Association The Hearts of Midlothian Football Club The Team That Went To War There had been no football club that sacrificed more during World War I than that of the Hearts of Midlothian. The first team to provide players in large numbers for service at a time when professional footballers were exempt from enlisting. As men rushed to arms, many wondered why football was continuing. Hearts had begun the football season of 1914 with eight straight victories, one of which was an easy 2-0 win over defending champion Celtic. By the end of November, they had lost only once in 16 games to Dumbarton. This team was said to be the best team in Hearts history and they were on their way to dominating Scottish football. On the 4th of August 1914, Britain declared war in Germany. During this time of war, Britain was struggling to quickly gain volunteers. In response to Britain's concerns, politician Sir George McRae was given permission to raise his own battalion, claiming he could fill it in a month. And by the 12th of December, he had McRae had obtained 1,347 men to form the 16th Battalion Royal Scots. On January 1916, the men were sent to France. At 2pm on the 25th of November 1914, 16 of the Hearts players signed up for duty. 11 of them enlisted in the 16th Battalion of Royal Scots, soon to be known as McRae's Battalion or the Footballers' Battalion. The following day, two others signed up. George Sinclair and Neil Morland had already been called up as Army Reservists and James Speedy had signed up to the Queen's Own Cameron Highlanders after they had called for volunteers during the half-time game against Falkirk. A further five players were rejected on medical grounds. Encouraged by the players and fans of Hearts, the fans and players from Hibs, Wraith, Falkirk and Dunfermline quickly joined up too, ensuring McRae kept his word in raising a battalion within a month. Ten members of one local junior team, Moss End Burnvale, marched into the recruiting office to join up together. Sadly, only one returned from war. Germany, Italy and Spain kept their leagues running during the war while Britain shipped most of their players off. Hearts remained undefeated until February 1915, but military demands meant missing games and 10 mile night marches just hours before matches took its toll and Hart sadly suffered having led the league 35 weeks out of 37, ended up finishing second four points behind Celtic. The 16th Royal Scots were deployed to France on the 8th of January 1916 and on the morning of the 1st of July the sportsmen climbed out of their trenches and advanced towards the German line. The battalion was recorded as having made the greatest advance against enemy lines of all the battalions in action on that first day of the Somme but it was the blackest day in the history of the British Army as a total of 60,000 men were killed or wounded in just a few hours. The 16th Royal Scots itself saw 347 of its men wounded and a further 229 men killed. By the end of the war in 1918, Hearts were to lose a total of seven players, including five from McRae's battalion. The five were Tom Gracie, who Hearts had bought from Liverpool in 1912 for £400. He had scored a club record 29 goals in his first season and had been selected for a Scottish League against the Irish League in 1915. He died of leukaemia at the age of 26 while in hospital before he could see any military action and is the only one of the Hearts war dead to have a known grave. Henry Watty, died at the Somme on the 1st of July 1916, aged 23. He had been predicted to become a footballing great. Duncan Curry died at the Somme on the 1st of July 1916, aged 23, after being shot in the shoulder. 
he played for co-winning Rangers before moving to Hearts of Midlothian Football Club for a transfer fee of two guineas. His officer wrote to his father, he was universally popular and admired for his skill at football. Ernest Ellis was also killed on the first day of the Somme, aged 30. He was hit by machine gun fire just in front of the Germans' barbed wire defence. James Boyd died 3rd of August 1916, aged 21. He was the last Hearts man to die on the Somme. He had been transferred to hospital after being wounded, but the hospital was hit by artillery fire, killing all inside. The two other Hearts players who died in action were James Speedy, who died on the 25th of September 1915, aged 21. He, sadly, was the first to volunteer and was the first Hearts player to be killed in action. John Allen died 22nd of April 1917, aged 30, after being shot while scouting out a wood. He was the last Hearts player to be killed. Pat Crossnan and Willie Wilson, although wounded, returned to play again for Hearts. Pat had been wounded twice and gassed, and having never really recovered, died prematurely in 1933, and Willie lived with permanent pain from his injuries. Jimmy Frew came back and signed for Leeds, and Jimmy Lowe, having been turned down by Hearts, signed for Newcastle. Norman Findlay escaped injury, having been discharged early to work in the shipyards. Anna Ness, Bob Preston and Alfie Briggs all received injuries that affected them throughout the rest of their lives, with Briggs still having two machine gun bullets lodged in his back when he died in 1950. They shall not grow old, as we are left to grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning we will remember them. <laughs>